this whole thing. The house of cards are here. Uh, all for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm just getting back into the swing of things, man. Wednesdays are bad for me. I got my house. You kind of know what I'm doing. I never know where to start, but I think you've seen me enough times to draw I don't usually expect much from you on Wednesdays. Right? I don my nicest frock and get out here and do what I can do. Yeah. I have no expectations for this one, so cool. I mean, these workshops are always kind of like a circle to it. You got your normal folks, you're right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, this guy. That's about all I'm going to say. Coming out the Molly Blades, Molly Blades made a comeback. Yeah. Yeah. They'll do wonders for your blues. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should check that out. <laughs> Although I'm already just uh, a bit, I'm underweight these days now. There you go. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not on my fighting weight. Yeah, I guess, that, I guess so. Equality for all, right? Hey Trish, Trish, do you know Brett? Brett runs Humble Woodfire Pizza. Oh, that's why you're familiar. Yeah. Trish has one of the cutest children, child, kid, whatever you call it. Little person. A little person I've ever met. Millie. Yeah. Where is Millie now? Where she is she? She's a kid. Oh yeah? Fantastic. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's a lucky day. The rest of us, we go to slum it in public schools. It's nice and public schools. Really makes all his money parking cars on game day. So the kids don't have to like hop chocolates and paint silver jewelry all year. No, like your, used to. your PTO is like famous. Bang it. It's yeah, famous bang for it. the <laughs> amount of revenue. <laughs> it's great. Not really public schools, but it is. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. Are you a part of the PTO at PK? No, I keep thinking I should, and then I don't. I feel like, as parents, hope is an important thing to maintain, but expectation is an important thing to keep very, very important. Um, yeah. So, uh, so what should we expect here, Trish? What's the game plan tonight? Well, this is, um, this is the feedback that we've got. We've had some workshops in October and November, basically asking people where to focus our attention. Alright, so this is what you guys take it from that, like, uh, Yeah, so, so tonight is our, are we getting it right? Or okay. is there anything missing? Or is there anything we should be on there? Alright, cool. So we should take a look at these, uh, these boards. You can look at the boards. Oh, it's just someone will explain them and work with them. And they're also, you know, printed in your packet. And then if you want to grab a little bit, you can do that too. Yeah, it might be snack time. Or if you have any questions, I'll say the questions. That's what you guys are for. Yeah, so you'll have a staff person at your table to help. Okay. Alright, cool. All right. You guys are sitting at the right table. Are we with you, big guy? Do you gentlemen know each other? We have, we have a report. We do. Is that right? How could you not have a report? Two good-looking young gentlemen. Keep up it going. Yeah, just keep it. Just keep it. <laughs> hey. Uh, boom, 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 we gotta boom, talk boom, about boom, boom. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't play that game anymore. Oh, I no. took my ball and went home. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Good we luck. want to keep playing, bro. Yeah, you can't buy houses anymore now because I quit. <laughs> yeah, they don't sell them. I'm slinging commercial real estate now. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, I mean, dabbling with, with Callan over at Portland. Right hey, whatever happened with Hartwood? Did, that, did you guys just decide not to do that? Or is that. It, did you guys award a brokerage? Is it. Or can we. Team Dynamo. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. You went with the big wigs. Don't be I butt see hurt. how Don't it be is. Butt hurt. <laughs> I love Craig. You know what's funny? I got a text from him three weeks ago saying, hey, how busy are you? I think we're going to have some high volume units coming online that we need quick clothes on. And I told him the same thing I told you, no mas. But I'm wondering if maybe that's what it is. What's the timeline on Harley? Um, well, if you'd have picked me, Hartwood would have been the only thing yeah, I was focused been, on. Yeah, we would have been residence <laughs> filled. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, we're building a model home. We're, we're permitting right now for the model home. Okay. And so, uh, and we're also working on the finish and the spec packages to like, figure out what the sales prices are going to be for all right. So, right, cool. Once we got all that, we're going to roll out the, the big event. You know? And the model home will be up when? Six months after we bring around. By the end of this year, you think, or next oh, year? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Righteous, man. Hopefully by the end of summer. Have you been over to see the Hartwood like area? I don't actually know what y'all are talking about. All right, Hartwood is a development on the east side. Give me, give me the, the like cross. So it's over. It's over on uh, North uh, Southeast Seventeenth Street and Seventh Ave. Okay. Right. So just like a little right like east Heights. of Williston Road, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. south of there, they bought how many acres? 30? No. Um, that's a good question. I think it's 15. 15, okay. But they put in all these new sidewalks, connected all the the infrastructure, trails, side, uh, sewer mountain, upgrade, curb. really beautiful road, like native landscaping and shit. And they're going to build like a portable new home. Well, we're building 11 of them are going to be affordable. 11 are going to be affordable, and then like... It's a total of 34. 34, right. 11 will be affordable. Which, Which is, is nothing. Cool. They're, they're, it's just going to be like on the back end. You know, they're going to get... That's the way to do it, man. This is like... Affordable? Like, <laughs> <you know, laughs> when you say affordable, yeah, you got about you. Dollar threshold. Yeah, like per square foot. Right, right, right. Like they'll be in the 160 to 180. But you get like a 2,500 square foot house. You know, new construction, which is... They're subsidizing some of the idea of mixing mixing in like new construction where like I could come in and be like I want a four hundred fifty thousand dollar house. You know what I mean? And same community as you know, a little bit smaller house but at above sixty that you know that's what that's uh low middle income family you know, mix them all up together. When we were in, when, uh, when I was in DC last time, they got law in place. Any new development over yeah, like 40 units. It has to include 25% of right? Subsidized by the government. And so they're mixing them in. So you've got a 10 story building, and you got like portable, portable, portable. You got like a $4 million penthouse. You got the families are growing up together, the kids are going to school together, they're on the same elevator. That's why I got, you know what I mean? It's really cool. They don't have to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everything's kind of trash. It's just a lot harder here. <laughs> Big developers fighting against a friendly government. I give them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
my money's on that. I like that. I like this one. Yeah, she's rad. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, so I, I, yeah, anyway, we walked through there years ago when it was like, yeah, they haven't even had they begun the process of like, right, they had taking the developer, yeah. obviously they did. Yeah, I mean, we can find out, I, last I heard, the big went to a company that merged and acquired something like that, and we, uh, next to the project. Yeah, that's what I. That's what it says something along those lines on the website. I was looking at the projects. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was just anticipating some sort of book off. Yeah, you know, I should know. That's what was so crazy about it too. Is like, you know, Davis didn't like show all his cards. You know, Davis, right? And, you know, so he was just like, you know, like yeah, we got this protocol to go through. Right. Right. And as far as like, being like, what if I showed up? I love that. That's how I got out of a movie. Like, I, I, have, I got money right now. Just a million dollars. I don't think here's one million dollars. Yeah. yeah, we can't do it that way. Yeah, but yeah you can. You can. You just don't want to. How you doing, man? Good. Sorry, I didn't see the big markers. Right. I'm Pat. Pat, please do yeah. You too. <laughs> so what brings you down here on a Wednesday night? I live downtown. Okay. Try to stay involved a little bit. Heard there was some free food. Why not? No, I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Very surprised. That they really swung for it this time, huh? They obviously must have done something wrong. Yeah. I'm a commercial real estate agent, real estate attorney. So, you know, I work downtown mostly. And I got a bunch of friends who work for the CRA. So, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, all the pieces fit together. So, what part of downtown are you in? I have a property in Porters. I have a, part of, a place on East University. Okay. And I also. Uh, I have a home in the duck pond. Oh, all right. So you're all around downtown. Yeah, yeah. How long have you been here? A while? Yeah. I used to live downtown back in the early 90s and 80s. But I moved west for a while. I only recently moved back now. Oh, really? Yeah. The past couple of years now. Yeah, I mean, so I went to law school in Kansas and then we came back in 2010. And we bought. Pleasant Street area. And we were there for about six years before we live in Florida Park now. Uh, yeah, the Pleasant Street area. Yeah, I, mean, I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine who built a spec house there. Three hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Which, you know, we moved in 2010 into that area. Yeah, I remember what it was like when I bought a Northeast University in the 90s. Yeah. And uh, Kiefer Hawkins was helping make that pleasant That's area. That's so really funny. Nice. He was my landlord when I was an undergrad. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sandy and him. Yeah. We had a place right behind the Salvation Army, right there next to Sweetwater. Okay. And Sandy and Kiefer were my landlords. How are you doing, man? Vince, Brad, Brad, Vince. I see you around. Uh, I run Humble. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I make it there almost every Friday. Right. Is that right? Yeah, that was a great event you guys had this past weekend. The yeah. food party? Yeah. yeah, I think so. That's good. It's a good turnout. I was honestly a little surprised at the turnout. I think everybody. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah. No, it was well turned out. I met Brett, what, seven years ago? Yeah. Yeah, he is. A friend of mine who beginning. lived in the Pleasant Street area. We had kids the same age. And he rolled up to a Koa's birthday party. Remember that? And he was he was making pies for all the folks, you know, there for the birthday party. He just built an oven on the back of his trailer. That was great. And I'm thinking this kid's out of his mind. Huh. And uh, and since then you got what two trailers, a food truck, and uh, we got two food trucks in that small full original trailer. Yeah. So great idea. Yeah, yeah man. Well, I like your stuff. I really appreciate that. Yeah. I'm hoping to grow a little bit this year, but we'll yeah. see. It's a pretty good handle on Gainesville from the historic standpoint, you know, because I've been here for so long. Yeah. But uh, like I said, I've worked out of Atlanta for a while for the company now, and then 
I kept the home here. And then when I got married, my wife wanted to live out west. So even though that wasn't my desire, I, I took my family and raised them out in the Hale area. And I always longed for and wanted to be a part of this. I had the property still, I like to live in them. Oh, you had kids. I think that's a big part of it, right? Well, back then, you know, truly, it wasn't that really. I mean, we used to take my, had my little boy, take him to the playground, right, uh, right behind school. I guess that's true. And the school it was, was like pretty gross, you know, with yeah. like needles and yeah. condoms laying on the on the bench. How old? How old is your kid? He's 20 now. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you weren't sitting in the Metcalf Elementary. I mean, that's, you know, that, that play, I got a friend of mine who was a teacher there for years, and she wouldn't send her own kid there while she was teaching there, you know? So that's one of the big things this area is really lacks. Yeah, good elementary school. Yeah, good elementary school. Good yeah. walk school. But, you know, it's getting better all the time. I just do a lot. I love the downtown. Yeah, and I think it's, it's getting better and better. Uh, I had six on my name tag, so I guess this well, is what well, I see in the well, cafeteria. Well. Yeah, other than some of the bars that have been opening up downtown, have you noticed this trend of of awful college bars opening up? I don't really pay much attention. Uh, it's been the trend in Gainesville forever. <laughs> I guess. I I just it seems to me like they're getting uglier and uglier. Yeah. Kind of like the uh, GTF. You didn't see. That's is my point exactly. Yeah, there's a bar that opened. Is it open by the same time? Sorry, looking at them. The old dueling pianos. Wait, the old Rocky? dueling Rocky's dueling pianos is now a bar called GTF, and it's plastered with those awful like you know Michelob Ultra window displays. Oh, oh it's brutal. It's hardcore. Cookie castle. They went all in. They, well, or they went the all the way down. Yeah, they went this is down, race to the bottom. Yeah, kicking guys. Yeah, I see this. Trip. Well, you know, Midtown's getting bought up. They're gonna get rid of a lot of the bars there. So I think it's inevitable that they're gonna start moving this direction. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I'd like to see. What's that? Uh, that place is great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the South Main area is, I think, the next kind of uh, locale. Started it, sold it to Sarah. Yeah, but they are, they're great, man. I was sad to hear them going. Which, you know, that's keep that in mind. There's a full kitchen in there. Yeah, restaurant I run a growing out of that space over there. Um, yes and no. I, I, we actually, I actually just moved from uh, like a 900 square foot space. Yeah. So the plan, sort of tentatively, is to do a retail space in our old location over there, in the top floor. But that's still kind of basically still not as good. That was 900 square feet. You have to go back. I mean, I, I think it's actually 950. And I think yeah. that includes the utility closet on the hay truck. That doesn't count. They squeeze every fucking yeah. The uh, pretzel place, I think it's only 650. Yeah, I mean, that's the city's always constantly evolving, you know? You, know, you got people coming and going. The what part? The food part. It's that part, that food part. <laughs> Uh, 
I think, I think part of it, and, you know, this is stuff for debate is like how much you can buy. You know, there was that convenience store there. You know, just trying, CD, you know, CD there was just yeah. constantly, you know, people around the drugs, drinking, etc. And, you know, that was a bit of a contentious issue because there was, you know, some that argued it's like, it's like the only place in the area where you could, like, go to the groceries. But, you know, the guy sold, like, I have the homes over in Porters that I've had since the 80s. So I know how much it's changed in that area. And that was always a troubled area for me. So. Yeah, I mean, that strip mall even, you know, used to be a little shady. Yeah, it was rough. I mean, I'm constantly big uh, bad stuff happening up. Yeah, it's like my property. Do you know Kirk Reed? I do. Yeah. Way back when. I used to I rented from his dad when I was in college. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, Kirk owned that strip mall. He sold it to yeah. Tim and Brett. Yeah. 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 It's a Kirk Reed property. It's a Kirk Reed property. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like where Daybreak is in Pleasant. You know, he, he'd buy up those little strip malls. But now he doesn't do commercial. I think the Daybreak building is the only commercial that he has left in his portfolio. But yeah, once upon a time, his dad was a real estate uh, Mobile, maybe, would be one way of putting it, kindly, but yeah. He had a lot of nice houses, but we didn't do much with them. <laughs> yeah, or the commercial building, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how much is left like that here in town. Those sort of under-the-radar gyms, I think they're all pretty much... Oh my god, give me a second.
you're too young to know this from the first hand. But yeah, when I first came to school in the 70s, there was only a... Uh, there was nothing out there. <laughs>
really so you know you have to peel off that red part, right? To shams and then to shams to the seventeenth are sealed. And uh, we have a four to do the yard and the transmission of the hump is just broke. What do you mean? They had to dis disconnect something. They had to light the tow it to even tow it back. They couldn't push it. And it still just froze up on the road. Just froze up on the road. Right on, on uh, 16, when he was leaving to go to Shams to start the run. He froze. Complete. Wow. We had to call the mechanics to go out there. I don't know what they did. I want to say a drive shot. I'm not sure. But they had to disconnect something to even tow it back to the road. And it's brutal. When that happens, you're leaving an hour of people high and dry. And on Monday mornings, it's just the hardest time to get a second bus out. And then you cross to the city. Carissa, how much time will you get off? Why don't we have a bus like at the mall? Stand by bus with a driver. I'm already going to go and pick up Right, as necessary. And they weren't a host. And we have a lot of drivers now. That may be a bit, we may have a bit more power. I don't know. Wait, because this is that situation. And then the whole thing. Brown scene is going. Actually, I gave her commendation once before for them to have no Good evening. How are you? First of all, thank you all for joining us this evening. My name is Tony Gray. I'm the principal with EDSA Incorporated. We are land planners, landscape architects, and urban designers. We're based in Fort Lauderdale, but this is our home. We travel all over the world. Um, I love coming to Gainesville. I come here quite often. I'm starting to find Gainesville as my second home. It's really cool. So we're going to have a good night. Um, we're going to go through where we are today in terms of this process. Many of you have attended meetings before. We really appreciate your um, interest and your care for this community um, as we move into the next level. Um, the agenda is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna present, but during the presentation, there will be moments for us to discuss and have conversation. Before we close in the evening, it's gonna be an open forum opportunity um, to answer some of the questions that we have. So we really wanna hear from you. Um, we have some wonderful people here that are gonna scribe for us. And I wanna acknowledge the CRA staff, um, especially um, Sarah, we you all know. And for all the other staff members in blue shirts, um, please raise your hand so everybody knows who you are. If you have any questions during this process, please make sure you grab them. And I'm going to roll through the presentation so we can keep it going, but there will be plenty of time for you to ask questions and really engage in this process. Get these mics to come the way. Thanks, Justin. All right. So many of you have been here, you've seen what we've been doing, but um, we're going to run through this quickly so we can get to the meat of the presentation. Um, our agenda is pretty straightforward. We're going to talk about what has happened so far. We're going to talk about what's in the plan that we're going to be sharing with you. And then we're going to talk about what's next, and that's really exciting. So the, the first two parts of the agenda, I'm going to really blow through those quick. So, so far, um, we've had a lot of great engagement. Um, we've also had quite a bit of planning going back to 2018. Um, many of you have been involved in the process. Um, this year, we spent a lot of time listening and learning as much as we possibly can from you in terms of what the CRA should be doing um, for this community. Now, we are validating what we've learned, and that's why this is so important. And then we're gonna adopt something that's gonna be our roadmap, basically our recipe for the future. The timeline. This community has been very engaged, which is awesome. It's the way we like to work. Um, there have been several community meetings that the CRA staff has been invited to. And then our firm was brought on and we got involved and had a kickoff meeting on the 14th of October of last year at the Cotton Club, which was very well attended. Um, then the CR st CRA staff continued with um, community meetings, being invited to um, neighborhood meeting associations, etc. And then we came back in November for a super deep dive. Many of you were there. It was what I call the gauntlet. We typically do a workshop, you know, a day here, a day there. We did four workshops in a row. It was a lot. I've never done that before, but it was super successful. And you guys had a lot to do with that, so we're very excited that we were able to get there. And then before the end of the year, there was another community meeting, a crime watch meeting. Going forward in terms of our engagement, which is fantastic, 
you are going to get a lot more opportunities to review this. Some of you may remember um, in our earlier presentations, I told you that we would have to finish by the end of the year. Well, fortunately, we don't because that was a very short time frame to get all the work done. So going forward, um, we've already met with the, um, the CRA advisory board. And today is our first community meeting. It's the first draft of this review. We will have a second review as well as we go forward. Tomorrow we'll be at the city commission meeting, and then we'll come back to see you guys again in February. There will be another advisory board meeting, there will be a community meeting, and then we'll also move forward towards meeting with the commission. In March, we come back to the commission for a final draft. It's basically, they're going to see the second reading, and then we are going to have a public plan unveiling, a really cool event also in March. And then finally, there will be a joint city uh, county uh, consolidated plan presentation. So you may be asking what's in the plan. And you guys have seen a lot of this. Um, essentially, this is what the CRA um, went for the community reinvestment area is meant to do. Um, we have a 10 year plan that we have to work through, but we also need to make sure the plan tells a lot about the history of this place, the authenticity of this place, and we need your feedback to do it. So we're going to break this down into a past, present, future, and the community feedback through the process. There is an ordinance. How many of you read the ordinance? Oh, oh pardon me. All right, so there is an ordinance that spells out everything that we need to do. Okay, and this ordinance will be unfolded and we will actually address every single one of these items in the plan. The plan is going to be presented in this presentation format, but there's also going to be a book. And that book is really the recipe for us going forward. So in the past, CRA has been around for a while, since 1979, the uh, Fifth Avenue and Pleasant Street uh, CRA was established downtown shortly after that. And then College Park and finally East Side. A lot of work has happened. This is the actual reinvestment area as it is today. Um, that is changing, as you know. We've had a lot of great input, a lot of great projects have occurred. And essentially, you have curated this. You have been a, a really big part of this process. And the redevelopment agency, as it was before, consisted of four different areas, as you know. Those four areas, as you can see, color-coded, um, we're able to achieve several different initiatives, several different types of projects. And those projects range from facade grants to investing in different types of projects that are, um, you know, hardscape, um, streetscape, um, utilities, all sorts of things. And many of the projects or initiatives that were um, created or completed were multi-district initiatives, which we thought um, was really fantastic. What do CRAs do? CRAs are here to promote economic growth. So that has happened. Um, we were able to um, research and analyze some information that was brought to us to really show you how that has come together from a 2016 study. Um, in the College Park area, the taxable value growth went up by 19%. Pleasant Avenue went up by 25%. Downtown investment went up by 43%. And then the east side actually went down a little bit by minus three percent. But overall, the east side is comparable with the city of Gainesville as a whole, minus three. Now today in the present, um, several things were done in 2019 to gear us up for this. So in 2019, one of the first things that was done was to adopt a roadmap for uh, five years. And this roadmap uh, essentially listed all the initiatives that we were ongoing, uh, all the things that we're working on to get us to where we are today. So those are a list of projects that you're probably all very familiar with. And then we have to understand where we work. Now, where are we today? This is sort of the snapshot of the funds that are available. Now there are funds that are unencumbered, have not been assigned, and there are funds that are encumbered. Here's how it all lays out. I'm gonna get back to this a little bit later. In the future, so on October 1st, 2019, this all came together in terms of us becoming a reinvestment area. So no longer a redevelopment area, now a reinvestment area. I'll touch on how that occurred. So we went from four districts to one district. This was really important. Um, so the new structure we operate is a single district within 
this community with a set budget that needs to be guided by this reinvestment plan that we're working on right now. The process for getting there was first to create one district, erase all the lines in between, to create an advisory board, which we've met with before, and many of the advisory board members have been a part of this from the beginning. And then to work on this reinvestment plan, which is what we're doing right now. The red box essentially denotes the process of where we are today. Getting us to something in April that is complete. Just another graphic to give you more of a pictorial view of how it happened. We went from one district, so it's one larger area, with one budget. We'll talk about that a lot, a little bit more too. So our investment every year is capped at $7.5 million in terms of what we can bring in. And then you can see the work we have to do has to be done in 10 years. All right, let's touch on the process. The process for us is really important. You have to have a methodology to get you there. Um, if you don't have that, sometimes you can get derailed. So we took the former redevelopment plans and we analyzed them. We looked at them very closely. And during that analysis, we realized that we needed to also have community engagement. So the community engagement and the analysis has informed the reinvestment plan that we're working on now. Today, we're in that dotted area. We're working on a draft. All right, this is a draft. So it's, it's, it's up for debate, discussion, conversation. That's why we really want to get your input. And what that's going to allow us to do is to create a reinvestment plan. So community engagement, like I said, many of you were very well involved. Um, you gave us a lot of good feedback. Um, we took a lot of notes. We had surveys out there that were very helpful for us, as well as um, you know, graphics and things that you shared with us during the process. Um, we really encouraged the um, community to attend any of the meetings that we brought forward. And this is a really good show to show that you guys really care about where we are going forward. Meetings were held in different places, obviously. They allowed us to engage different community um, input and make sure that everybody was heard. And this is what we heard. It's pretty interesting. Through the survey, we learned, based on the areas where we were, what people really cared about. The larger circles denote um, the areas where people had a little bit more interest in other areas. It doesn't mean that one is more important than the other. It just means that this is where people were. Um, you can't have these up to 100, so don't, don't try to do the math. Um, this is just a snapshot to show you how we got to where we are today. I have my son. And then we took it from a different angle to understand the objectives that we had and are those objectives important to people today? Um, and what we found, the number one objective was economic development, which makes a lot of sense. None of this can, can be done without money, so we have to figure out how that happens. Housing, housing, housing. I can't tell you how many meetings we went to talked about housing, affordable housing, workforce housing, just housing. Commercial activity, if you have people there, you need things for people to do. That was uh, right in the middle. Historic preservation is ranked really, really high as well. Um, this whole idea of the aesthetics of this place, the urban form, the character, that was also important. Again, back to economics, the financing, the funding, the, the way we make it work in terms of management, important. Public space, got in there, and parking down at the bottom. I found that very strange. So many projects we work on, parking's way up at the top, so that's, that's a good thing. Now going forward, we asked ourselves, okay, this is what we used to do in the past. How are we gonna do this going forward? How are we gonna select these initiatives? How are we gonna select these projects? So we took a stab at a worksheet, and many of you saw it large over here um, on the easel. So in order for us to understand which projects or initiatives need to go forward, we have identified this process. And so first of all, is the initiative in the CRA, right? It's gotta be in the CRA for us to even consider it. Next, does it do these things? Does the initiative address city plan projects or initiatives address the things that we think are important? Equity, planning skates, wild spaces, all these things are important to us. Next thing we looked at is does the initiative address a GCRA reinvestment plan objective? I'll get to those objectives soon. And finally, there was a vitality report created that really established kind of the benchmark for what works, what type of CRA projects um, are successful. And we found that these six ideas, these six elements, 
really affected the success of plans. And when a plan or initiative has multiple, it's even better. So having this idea of layers, being able to be connected, um, the scale of each project, authenticity, as I said before, is super important. <coughs> having partnerships and really focusing on health and safety. All these things, all these elements were very important in terms of the types of projects that we would want to see. And we want to get your input on this. All right, so that was the community feedback, that was the community engagement that helped us with one portion of the process. The next portion of the process is essentially focused on the analysis. What do we have that's existing and why is it important? So we looked at the opportunity zones in this area. Are you guys familiar with opportunity zones? <coughs> Very important. This also, also spurs development and investment in an area. So we have several of these opportunity zones that provides tax incentives for developers, for communities to actually get things done. Then we looked at the existing land uses and analyzed them. We talked about the specific spaces in the CRA that are important, such as the power district. Cornerstone, Hawthorne, we talked about what's happening in Depot, and we also looked at what's happening on the east side, the Duval neighborhood, as well as um, Northeast 8 and Walton Road. All important areas that need additional uh, attention. And a lot of this information was um, really um, sort of influenced by what we were learning from you along the way. So to give you some example of land use, adjustments that allowed you to get to where you are. Um, the Aikman Jones Museum, which is the residential area, was occurred, what happened in the power district in terms of changing some of the uh, land use in that space, allowed that development to occur. And obviously Depot Park, which we're all very proud of, was formerly industrial. Now look at it. So there are things that we can do to get us to where we need to be. Next thing we looked at was circulation. Um, you know, you, connectivity is such an important element of planning and the community, and it was really important for us to understand the different types of ways you can get around and different types of things you want to see. So we looked at the opportunity of an art trail and that connection, how it happens within the downtown and all around the entire uh, CRA. We looked at a historic trail, um, looking at things that have been done in the uh, Fifth Avenue Pleasant Street area and how that connects to the rest of the community. And then we looked at a nature trail. And this was really important, especially on the inside. There's quite a bit of land that is open space that's really beautiful and wonderful and should be conserved and protected. Just a few ideas and examples of how that work has already been completed. So you're already doing this. So here's the idea. How can we leverage what we have to where we need to be in the future? So with the art, things that are happening um, in uh, the downtown area, the square, the plaza, and all that space, the Aikman Jones Museum, how that history is really important to all of us, and there's history all around us. We're sitting in history today, right now. It's fantastic. And then obviously these beautiful um, natural spaces that are on the east side and other parts of the as well as well. And how do we connect to the surrounding community and the surrounding region to make sure that we are um, fully engaged with the entire piece of the pie? Open space, that was the last objective we looked at. And basically open space and the benefits of what we do is we like to look at what is there and then analyze it, understanding why is it important. You know, we think that this area around Duval Park has great access to conservation areas and natural areas, but it also has a lot of residential. So there's a good blend there, um, giving people places to be. And we think that all of these different types of spaces are important in terms of providing people what they need. Right? Open space has a lot to do with quality of life, giving people the opportunities to be outside. So as a landscape architect, this kind of stuff makes me very, very happy. Um, being able to engage in the environment and understand why it's important. As a kid, I spent a lot of times outside. I mean, a lot of time, you know, playing in the creek, you know, running around. I didn't have to be home until my dad whistled or the street light came on. You know, we need more of that. You know, people need to be connected to the earth. And that's why we're here. So we're going to kind of start this process with some questions. This is where you start to get engaged. On your table, you should all see some 11 by 17 sheets of paper. And they have these questions on the screen as well. Um, 
And what we want you to do with your tables is take a little bit of time and think about these questions. The first question is up on the screen. We showed you the objectives, we showed you the areas that we are talking about, and we want to know what do you think about it. Do you think these are the right ones? In the past, we had several objectives, all specifically related to each redevelopment area. Now that we're one area, we've consolidated those objectives, and we want to make sure that they are really um, objectives we want to have as the board. You're welcome. So we're going to take about five, ten minutes. You guys work together. We'd like you to elect one person at the table to tell us about the responses. I don't see farms anywhere on here. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Public spaces, maybe. <laughs> Could go in any category, actually. I missed the instructions. What are we supposed to do? I think we're supposed to talk amongst so, ourselves, talk assign one person from the table to report back, but basically what's missing from this list and what's missing what you agree with as well. Yeah. So, okay. so if you agree with what's on here, yeah. make sure to note that you know, you're in agreement this is a good piece that's on here already. If you think that we missed anything or something's not on there or inclusive, to let us know as well. Okay. I'm going to say transportation but I'm going to say transportation business. Shopping. Yeah. How do you get around? Shopping. Shopping. All right. <coughs> well, so that would be an economic development, yeah. business recruitment incentives, yeah. commercial building, uh, public private partnership development, small business startup financial assistance. I think. You think it goes under there? Probably okay. within one of those, it could be, okay. you know, shop, you know. Businesses. You have pens if anyone yeah. needs pens. Yeah. I mean, would you have a specific like area of shop, like type of? Well, like on my side of town, there's nowhere to. We don't even have a grocery store. Yes. Right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. There's nowhere to shop. There's no anything over there. So yeah, that's an issue to me. Join the food system. Yeah. Really. Oh, for real. <laughs> Yes. In which side? Is it? Like on the I stay on, side? No, I stay on okay. North East. I stay on 39th, right down from the airport. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So, mm -hmm. up to the top. Uh, yeah. And that and that area is it's in our sparse. Or uh -huh. part of that area is in our redevelopment okay. area up there. Yes. And, so, you're, and you're right. There's no. And there's no grocery or anything. Okay, there. I have, we have to go potty. I'll be back. <coughs> I just took her. Yes. Urban agriculture. Where do you want urban ag? Under yeah, we want farms. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I guess it is. Yeah. It, farms could be. Yeah. 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 I mean, so it could be yeah. I mean, it could be in community initiatives. It could be in economic development or public. I mean, it could be any of those. I think I think farms would be part of food, food access yeah. because you're trying. Right. It, it is. It's not. So I'm going to put it perfect. under public space. Yeah. Okay, so urban and you're, you're staying at, I know we only have two routes that go there. That last mile, first mile that we have on the um, University and with RTS. University all the way to Robson Road. That's one of the that's one of the next phases. Like the lamp rider mm -hmm. neighborhood mm -hmm. because we get a lot of requests. We're trying to find the funding to expand our service. The second thing is we're to turn the bus around because right now they go to DOT, mm -hmm. but they close at five o'clock, so we can't go past the airport because there's no safe place no to place turn around. Turn. Okay. When historically we had a route that went to the lamp rider so, and went in. The residents said they didn't want the bus in there any longer because it made too much noise. The same neighborhood, we had residents that said, please bring us the bus. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of one of those deals. We have to have everybody in alignment to pressure, to put the correct pressure, but because we have nowhere to turn that bus around. So that's an area that historically we've had issues with. How do we service them? Interesting. So what, you, so what you're saying what you need in that area is somewhere that you can safely turn the bus, even if it's just you know a section of road right. that exists specifically for turning the bus around. Even if even if the DOT would and they won't, we got to well, put their gate further in mm -hmm. so we can come in, get in and turn around. Because from Grace Market, 
from even students from the airport. If you're in the airport, you can kind of catch a ride. But if you're east, further out, east of that, no, you gotta way. walk. Mm -hmm. so. And there's no uh, lighting, uh, yeah. sidewalks. Yeah. You see, there's no uh, there's there's no infrastructure mm -hmm. to, to to do this. So this would go under public space and streetscape initiatives, I guess. I would say it's economic because if you can travel, you can get food, you can go to work, you can go to a doctor, you can take your children to school. So, so for our initiatives, and I'm just flipping to a, a quick map. This is our new one districts. Um, We're talking about this area. And you're here. talking about, and actually, this is probably a better look at it here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is this here is the fairgrounds. Correct. Mm -hmm. Our area stops like right there at the edge of that corner. So we don't, unfortunately, I don't think we, this doesn't go out for us, for our district, out Are you to. South of 39th no, I'm, I'm north. I stay, you know where um, 15th Street is? Yes. Where yeah. Rollins Elementary School is? Mm -hmm. Rollins is in my backyard. Okay. I used to go to Rollins a long so time ago. Oh, really? <clears throat> I did too. Long time ago. So I, stay in, um, I stay right there on that. Okay, so you're you're actually on the other side of Water Road on 39. Okay. So the number 39 bus would potentially service that area. Right there, but 15, but not late. It goes to 11. It stops at the at 11. Okay. But a lot of stores, a lot of jobs. And then how do you get home? You have to work. How do you get home? It's like all four corners of the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have we deal with all we suffer from. Mm -hmm. uh, but you only have the 15. The 39 stops at 4:30 and doesn't run in the summer because that's a because route. That's a that route. was the route that we would love to extend through the summer that goes all the way to the airport, which goes to here. So, right. folks, if they want to go to college in the summer, they can take it all the way. That's a route that. It's supported by Santa Fe uh, oh, uh, College. They stopped at some point. Okay. And they took away funding this year, so we had to stop at an hour sooner. Okay. Okay. And that's something that how many folks here would benefit from having some transit options? Right? Because because from there you can get access once you're on the network and get access anywhere else on the RTS network. But you have to have access to it to start with. Here's an example. If you're here, you could take that 39 to 13. You have all these mm -hmm. all books right there. Take the 39 back. If it went to let's say nine o'clock at night, that's when those those that's supermarkets right. close. Yeah. Right now there's no you're done. So transit, you know, always always important. How do we capture what we're talking about here so that you know the CRA and the consultants can take this back and actually implement it and integrate it into their plan? So I wanna make sure so is it, you know, in northeast corridor or increased transport RTS yeah. transportation mm -hmm. access mm -hmm. or is it expanding roads? It can either be or? either expand Big cross service or introduce like the last mile, first mile. That would be the best answer in this area because then you could take people from their homes, not just for travel, to mm -hmm. um, so, to the service area. To the the service the fixed area. Right. So expand in that last mile, first mile. Is that? Like a van, or is that a yeah, smaller the total, it's a total structure? Yeah. yeah, it's a twelve seater van that goes to folks' homes. Yeah, it takes them anywhere in the zones and to Rosa Parks. Yeah. But anywhere in the zones, it's free of charge. But it's to get you. Hey, if it's raining, if there's a dog in the neighborhood, you don't want to walk to a bus stop because it's to eliminate that. Yeah. So folks can get to school, get to work, get to the doctor, get to shopping. So expand first mile, last mile into northeast section. And we have a lot of we have a lot of comments. We just need that political pressure to, mm -hmm. to, to, to help push it. Now, is that something that could we could use GCRA dollars to influence? Is the expansion of the first mile, last mile program, or is that separate because Potent of the potentially? Because right now there's we have there's an existing first yes. mile last mile, but mm -hmm. it's not focused on this side of town. Right then now we can it's, put a resource hub right there. It's yes. focused there. If we put a resource hub there, <laughs> and then it's 
Bennett's goes up the street and down the then, road. That would be. Then it's it's potentially it's potentially possible, especially especially to help feed into developments here. If, if you put this resource center, and she's talking. Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't. That's where a supermarket existed. Right, and there could be again so some sort of. You put there, there mm -hmm. and then you. Have Where's that? At? So, so do, you, do you know where the old save a lot feet used to be? Food line used to be on Hawthorne Road. Yeah. Near that's the area that's being talked about for a yeah. potential um, mobility center. Community-based resource hub that's a mobility center combined with an innovative food market that also provides access for transitional services such as you know health care coming in, legal mm -hmm. services. Did I send you the concept paper? No. But I mean, I should read it. I don't know if I'm technically allowed to because the city manager told me to stop, no. but uh, <coughs> you can leave it somewhere. I can yeah. leave you it could somewhere. leave it somewhere on a park bench yeah. and be like, oh, <laughs> it might have been a right? Somebody else sent it to you, Marty, yeah. not me. <laughs> you know, basically, that, that, that hub would be a hub. Right. It's not just transportation, not just food, not just medical. You have the health center right down the block from there. And it would be so efficient because we could pilot it as working only in peak hours. And so you're not expending resources throughout the day when nobody can get there to actually utilize the services. But if it's a hub, especially for first mile, last mile, in the morning and in the evening, when people coming to and from work who otherwise are not able to access things like the food pantries that are only open at a certain period of time during the day, they are then dropped off and have all of the services that they need right there centralized and then can be taken by the buses to go home. So they don't have to walk their grocery cart. Here's an example of what you did at the, uh, the cotton club when you were writing down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things with like the HUD mm -hmm. homes was you were picking the, the, the HUD homes. Yeah. One of those uh, conversations was like, hey, you were picking areas where these low affordable housing was, but there was no transportation. Yeah. Okay, you get a house or an apartment that's three fifty, five hundred a month, something that you can, how do you get to work? Right. How do you get to school? How do you get to doctor? How do you get to the dentist? These, this innovation hub that she's talking about, I asked this question at, at, at the event. Where is a dentist east of Waldo Road? Show me a dentist east of Waldo Road. If you okay? go really far east, yeah. so you're no longer even in a Right, so this, this right. is something, because this is something that, that is the difference between Actually, no rules. Yeah. So, so that in conjunction, because you're you know, very big on the urban agriculture, yes. being talked about, you know, as access to food, exactly. so that there could be potentially food markets set up there. Well, and that's what we would envision. All right. To have an How are you doing? Here that is a conduit for direct right. to the producer and to consumer, mm -hmm. cutting out the middle line so that the prices are more equitable for the producers and more reasonable for the consumers. All right. So what we're going to do now. We're going to do now to keep this evening going is we're going to have one person from each table let us know which objectives they, they are adding, which really objectives like. you're subtracting. I like public private partnerships. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were there any others we want to check off? I was going to go. I was going to say another one. Mm -hmm. So the next step is we're going to ask one person from each table to give us their thoughts on the objectives that we have, okay? All right? I you guys don't want to stop. <laughs> Look at this. I told you that. Right. So can you give me more minutes? Okay. I don't see. I'm going to give you two more minutes. I don't see any of those facilities. Give me two more minutes. The first one is on 16th Street, Main Street. I'll make a right turn. There's a dentist there. I don't see any dentist. Please. I would love to see some of the empty storefronts be revived for more community-based services. And that is that is something that the CRA can indeed help with. Because if you put a local... getting programs in place to do it. If you put a low-cost medical facility where you, you had folks that say shop, the same facility, one day it's a dentist, the next day it's mm -hmm. a general... A, a, joint, a joint facility. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That way... Somebody doesn't have to go, okay, I'm going to be there all week, I'm going to be there one day. I have my practice in another part of a town, <coughs> but I'm going to be there one day a week. Yeah, it's basically, it's a timeshare for businesses, a yeah. cool location. Cool, correct. I, I, I can see that. And if you guys can find that home, I can see that. Okay, so we have... 
empty storefront revival program specifically to provide medical dental services and other community-based resources and services. We have urban... had a great caption there. You had a great little thing. Okay. Make it a timeshare so they can, you know, a timeshare. So this way, the same facility can... That's what we're talking about for this resource hub, is mm -hmm. that it would be, you know, on Tuesdays from, you know, during peak hours, 4 to 6, it's the um, mobile outreach group. But then that same space is occupied by a legal uh, clinic on Wednesday, which is also occupied by a, you know, pro bono um, dental program on Thursday. And using, like, if the, all you need is the infrastructure itself and for the equipment necessary for those particular services to be made mobile so it can be moved in and out and not, doesn't encumber another provider from coming in and utilizing the space. So I can say medical, dental services, and other community based resources um, that operate out of a and I bet you, once they start doing that, they're going to find they're going to have a business where they can open up their own business. Yeah. Marty, any, any thoughts from you for things we're, we're missing, need to add in or focus on? No, not so far. I mean, I, you know, as far as transportation, we went around in circles, I think, on trying to get a farmer's market bus on Saturday to the Latchel County market and you guys I think fought it saying you know we go to Walmart and you go yeah but that's you know a quarter mile or a half a mile if you're elderly the other side of trying the to get yeah. groceries back from the market back to the east side yeah I don't think because um, the way the way RTS is, it has to be a fixed route so in other words um, that will be considered a charter. That's why we can't. That's why we can't do it. It has to be a fixed route Monday through Friday, and then expand to Saturday or Sunday service. That's the way that the transportation charter works. Mm -hmm. I don't think there are rules. I mean, is there no? Is that route doesn't run on Saturday, Sunday at all right now? Which one? The one going out to the Super Walmart on 13th Street. Yes, that one does. Yeah, that's rowdy. So and that's so where you the could farmers market. Stop at the at the Alaska County Farmers Market. You know, right by the old inspection the okay. vehicle inspection system. Does the, does that route go? Uh, so, but it goes on the other. It goes so, on the other side. so my so my suggestion: <clears throat> yeah. you go down 34th Street. Right. You have. Are you going stop. up up 34th or down? You go down 34th. South. You go you go towards 441 and 34th. Yeah. You have okay. the stop yeah. there at the farmers market. You make the left hand turn at the light. And you cycle back around on the by next the light, back around by the Walmart, and come back out onto 34th by the yeah, Walmart. Yeah, that we works. We can't do that because we have to go through the Pine Ridge neighborhood. Then you go, <clears throat> then you go further down, and you turn into the Pine Ridge light because you can you can still turn in. You turn in at that light. You make the first right hand turn, which will take you into the Pine Ridge neighborhood, which would then cycle you back out through the Walmart. That route goes 39th, makes a right turn. On 39th, it makes a right turn. On 34th. 34th. As it goes up, it makes a left turn right now. That's the way it operates right now. It makes a left turn, goes to the Pine Ridge neighborhood, goes out to 441, makes a right turn where that gas station and the Bacon Law Firm is, mm -hmm. yeah. goes into, uh, passes the Walmart. There's a stop right there. Then it goes at the light, it crosses the street, and goes to the senior center. So I'm suggesting. It goes to the senior <coughs> center. Yes. Yeah. It makes a U turn, then makes a left, and then goes south of 34th. Right. So if it's at the senior center, four and a half. Four and a half. But but so there's got to be a way just to go another half a mile, quarter of a mile, probably a third of a mile up from up to the Alaska County Farmers Market. Well, you said you said it's you said it's already turning at that. Right, the, it's the going to the senior center. So, I mean, the senior center is right here. So, I know that that park is expanding. Yeah, it is expanding. Okay, and we are waiting. That you want to highlight as being really important. There's a possibility of this because that park is expanding and they're putting the parking lot behind it bigger. I wonder, I mean, what what the plan, if there was a concrete plan for that park. I mean, you see the fill going in or the... Yeah, there is a plan. Yeah, they're they're moving to. I know they're moving to the disc 
the discard. With, yeah. With some resistance. Resistance. <laughs> yeah. But they're expanding the parking lot. Once that parking lot is done, uh, we can see if there's a way to go through the senior center, make a left and go to the market. Yeah. And then make a left and go back down 34th. That would be that that, would've... that was the battle we fought trying to get RTS to put a bus stop uh, to at drop people off at the market, market on yeah. Saturday morning. No, here's now the... he's agreed to and we're happy. Thank you. Oh, no, I can't. Yeah. I, I, he, he can't he can't do it himself. Yeah. But, but, no, but, here's the other but the thing. bug is known as here that it could happen. Right. Who's going to advocate for you? It's going to be tough. Whether or not it's possible then well, it's possible. It's just yeah. getting it done. Here's the other part. The other so the other maybe is the route which will probably be better is the route two combination six the route six goes to also to the walmart and it goes down 53rd and makes a left i mean uh 441 and makes a left a 34 to go to walmart mm -hmm. that's the one that's the route coming and going because that that bus goes to rosa parks and then goes, it turns into about two and then goes to east side. That's better. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that's, that's that going probably, right by. That's, that's exactly probably a better solution. How, how frequent on a Saturday morning, how, what's the coming and going interval part? That, that's every other hour. On Saturday. So it's every other hour on Saturday. So if you miss it, you miss it. Right. Because right. right. it's, it's but, Mark. Because this is what we heard from you. So we want to make sure that we're capturing what we learned. You guys feel good about them? Okay. So in 2020, all right, we'll have $7.5 million. 
as the years go on, right? There's inflation, there's, there's costs, there's administrative costs, etc. The money gets smaller and smaller as the years go on, okay? You understand that? So every year, this is what we anticipate to receive for the Gainesville reinvestment area, okay? Quick question? No problem. Thank you. Can you push back the calendar? Got it. So we use the term unstructured. That means that money has not been designated for specific purposes. That is correct. That is correct. Now, on these numbers, can those, for instance, can some of the downtown money go into the side? No. Yeah. So there are five accounts, right? There's the four old accounts that money has to be spent in those areas based on the CRA, Community Redevelopment Area Statutes. So that money has to stay there, right? Be spent there. And there's several things we could do. We could pay off the debt we have now. We could, you know, do new projects. There's so many things we can do with that money, but it has to be spent in those particular areas. Going forward, our new bank account is one and that's for the whole area. And that will be spent how we feel is most um, uh, important for the community. So this is the and this is what's our, this, our budget. Needs. What's the source of the funds? And I still don't understand why if you have more economic activity and economic development, why you have a yeah. increasing yeah. aggregate total. I'm glad you asked that question. So the way CRAs work, okay, is typically based on tax tax increment financing. So you get this much in taxes, but as it increases, the the addition goes into these accounts, right? Now we're capped at one number, $7.5 million. But over the years, that number gets a little bit smaller because of inflation and other things. Somebody else take a picture. You have inflation as well as um, fees, costs for, um, you know, for actually managing the money. Yes. The, the only clarification I would make is it's, it's really not inflation that's lowering the money. It's that the county's portion is lowering, and a portion of the county money each yes. year is going towards areas that have slum and blight that are just outside of the city of Gainesville, areas in the eastern part of the county, and Tower Road, for example. So these will be additional projects on top of the almost $70 million in the CRA dollars. All right, thanks for that explanation. Yes, if you do look at the county's portion, it does just decrease over the years, and the city's portion stays the same all the way through. Okay, makes sense? All right. Okay, here's the big question, okay? There are a couple of different approaches to how we fund our projects or our initiatives. The first approach is what we call front load spend. That's where we identify large projects, typically where large projects can happen pretty quickly. And we use the money that we will receive to pay off the debt. We know we're gonna get it every year. So we know that that will, if we want to bond, for instance, $60 million, we know we have a revenue stream to pay it off. The other way to do it is what we call even spend. So every year we get the amount, and that's the only, that's all we can spend that year. Does that make sense? In your checkbooks, it's just like your, your home, right? The final option is a mix. Let's say there are a couple of really awesome projects that we know we want to do, and we bond money for those two projects. Okay. The portion that's left over, we can spend little by little through the rest of the 10 years on smaller initiatives. So that's the idea. So you either have maybe three big projects and you spend now based on what you bonded. You have several small projects and you spend as you go. Or you have a couple of big projects and you know, half a dozen small projects. It all kind of works together as an initiative. So our big question to you is, what do you think? Which budget implementation strategy do you prefer? All right. So we're just going to vote this democratically, okay? Everyone for option number one, you raise your hand. It depends on, on what's included in option one. You see, that's, that's the thing about it. Once we realize what, which projects we're going to do, it really will help inform this question, 
right? However, we need to kind of figure out how we want to spend the money um, because the city manager needs to know how to budget it. So it's really not a matter of what type of project, it's a matter of how you want to spend. So at the next draft, based on everything we heard, we're going to come back with projects. You may remember that map that had, go back real quick. Stop here. We, time at the end we did have a stop there. I'll talk to Chris, who's our planner. You remember something? We'll be planner tomorrow. Please. We did have a stop there. All right, so All right. we're going to. Who wants to go first? So it, it should not be a city employee that does the speaking. So I can't. You want to do it? I wasn't here. So it's, 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 written, it's written right on there. It's, okay. it's written yeah, right on there. You got it. You got it. I wasn't here. Thank you. So what I would like you to do, what I'd like you to do is report out on the initiatives or objectives. What do you think about them? Are the right ones there? Did we miss something? Should we ask? Uh, looking at the three um, large categories, the initiatives, um, we had the sense that uh, the first one wasn't something that we thought the CRA should be focused on. That it's kind of redundant, that there are other city departments that are doing a very good job with those things. And so we would prefer to see the CRA focus more on um, economic development and revitalizing communities. Um, under the community initiatives, um, and one of the questions that I ask is, these aren't in alphabetical order, are they in order of uh, the number of responses people gave at previous workshops? Because in the community initiatives, the first three would be the ones that we would put at the bottom of the list. And the very last one, food access and service provider recruitment, is what um, many of us felt should be first because we are thinking east side, east side, east side. And east side needs a grocery store and a health clinic. And we want the CRA to do something to, make, to bring that about. Um, and uh, improving facades, infill, reviving um, storefronts. That is, are things that we think should be CRA objectives, but not so much the local history, branding, and art and culture, and there are other departments that deal with that. Um, so we're, we're, we're pretty satisfied with the economic development initiative, John. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's our takeaway. Hey, I'm Patrick Dallas. Um, I think overall we thought it was a pretty exhaustive list. Um, a couple of things that we identified as or just popped out to us were the small business startup financial assistance. One thing we kind of pondered was whether the CRA would be able to um, add to what was listed as part of that. Uh, how we phrase this, sort of extra uh, assistance to some of the businesses that move into these facilities, perhaps. Once they get started and up and running, they can use some extra financial assistance and whatnot uh, so they can continue operating and be successful at those locations. Um, a great suggestion here was uh, adding signage outside of the CRA area, indicating where the CRA areas are and some of the projects that have been developed, for instance, on I-75, you know, letting people know the Cave Museum, the Depot Park is accessible for uh, certain places. Um, under the Public Space and Streetscape Initiative, um, and we weren't sure if this fell under one of those, those items listed, but traffic calming, one of the things that uh, you know, we've seen a lot of roundabouts, I don't know if that would bicycle facilities or pedestrian facilities or whatnot, but, you know, I think mean, we've all kind of agreed that nobody knows how to use a roundabout, but for the most part, <laughs> once they do, I think, you know, traffic safety is a big thing that we all identify here. Um, and then, as Sharon just mentioned, I think 
a lot of focus on the east side as far as grocery goes, uh, supermarkets. One of the things that we mentioned was you know, making sure that uh, the east side is participating and identifying what their needs are rather than trying to, you know, the square peg in the round hole. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah.
capacity, she did really good. A lot of a lot of what she discussed falls into the community initiative. So I think what I'm hearing is that we need to make sure that that element really resonates with all of the opportunities. You ready? Um, so we talked a little bit about. Oh, Anna Prezia. Sorry. Um, uh, so we talked a little bit about sort of we had some questions and then we talked about kind of what we felt was missing. We didn't really critique each individual thing and whether it belonged. Um, we talked about that we didn't really see affordable housing in this. We saw some housing mentioned in the community initiatives, but not specifically affordable housing. And in particular, around things like the um, they talk about the uh, residential. Uh, facade, thinking about that not just for like paint and landscaping, but also energy efficiency upgrades to make those houses more affordable, um, roof, things like that. Uh, we also talked about the lack of public health and health care being addressed in this as initiatives, um, the idea of clinics or telehealth areas or wellness centers that people could go in and connect to resources. And we also talked about the fact that recreation and the community center aspect seemed like maybe it was missing or it wasn't explicit. Um, and then we talked about how the economic development initiative and the community initiative ha should have sort of a membrane um, so that the community initiatives, like we're not just thinking about big business and attracting business here um, and sort of larger scale development, but also the local nonprofits and the community organizations that are in our communities every day doing this work and how can we incentivize them and support them to keep providing these services at much more affordable rates than our government can provide them. Um, and we talked about, at the very end, I've heard some people talking about sort of public space, the public space initiatives and the fact that there is a lot of that going on um, with wild spaces, public places, and that there needs to be some coordination if we're gonna focus in that area as an initiative that we make sure that we're not double dipping or overspending and one area and you know making sure that we make the most of this money. So did I miss anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the community center and recreation center, the idea of that being kind of connected between community and public spaces. from that community initiative, 
block can be moved over to the Economic Development Initiative block, where it doesn't have to be moved, but it can be more closely tied because we believe community initiative and economic development go hand in hand. They deserve, they deserve each other, and you know, they deserve to be together. <laughs> um, we talked a little bit about economic development, basically business recruitment, um, the food access we talked about, and then uh, when it comes to doing small business, um, should absolutely be supported, but along with small business should be training. Um, if we're doing small business, especially in areas of um, <coughs> that don't have small business to train people who want to be entrepreneurs, who want to you know, have their own business to start their, their companies and stuff, should be available to them through community outreach centers um, and other places like that can be, that can be built. Just <laughs> All right, we're almost there. Okay. Hello, my name is Ashley Pisa, and what we thought was important under public space is lighting and safety, and we added urban agriculture. Under community initiatives, we highlighted empty storefront revival program and added medical and dental services and other community-based services and resources that operate out of the shared space. Under economic development initiatives, we felt it should be community-driven and we highlighted business recruitment incentives, public-private partnerships, small business startup assistance. We added um, a resource hub with um, farm to consumer market that supports our local farmers, expand first mile, last mile into the northeast section of CRA area, agricultural based enterprises or innovative food district that is created or designed with community support and community owned businesses. Very good. Two more tables. Who's rolling? You just got fallen told. Melanie Barr. So under public space and street state initiatives, we talked about bicycle facilities. We want to see um, people able to bike more around the city. And we talked about utility modifications. Hopefully putting things underground so you didn't see a bunch of wires and poles all over the neighborhoods. Um, that was pretty much what we talked about public space. Our priority was community initiatives. Of course, at my table, local history was high priority. I, I think the neighborhoods need to keep their identities and preserve our history. That's what makes Gainesville, Gainesville. Uh, we talked about Pleasant Street, we want to try to keep its identity. It needs to have its history highlighted. And we mentioned, um, like the, for example, the swamp building being torn down and the buildings behind it and the, old, the post office from the 1950s, that whole block's going to be wiped out and some kind of high-rise or mid-rise wealthy student building being put there. And that's a very charming corner. We talked about the soul of Gainesville and we lose that corner. We, it's from downtown to I-75, there's nothing historic. We talked about empty storefront revival and another priority was food access and service, not service provider, we wanted small mom and pop businesses and farmer's market kind of businesses. And that tied in with a small business startup financial assistant and economic development. We want the emphasis to be on mom and pop businesses and food uh, places in order to stimulate the, the local neighborhoods and to have their own identities. But local history was really high priority. The credit unions, we also talk about self-help credit union, which is happening. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. You talked me into it. Um, I'm Marcia Swire representing Table Free. So I think the first kind of off the bat um, gets down to semantics of we believed that each of these represented overall objectives, public space and streetscape objectives, community objectives, economic development objectives. 
and in, the, in those were initiatives. So um, that aside, we also recognize that there were a lot of overlapping relationships and layers to this, so thinking about it less as three independent objectives, but more as a Venn diagram of relationships among all three. Um, in addition to that, we dove deeper into, okay, we think we generally have everything on the list, but what's missing? And a couple of things we identified were health, education, expansion, and access. Um, and that went kind of in community initiatives and objectives. And then the other one that we probably talked the most in depth on was business internships and mentoring. So development and retention of local workforce, taking care of our own and connecting the business to the community. Thank you all. That was really, really great. And but I didn't expect that to go so long. You guys really got into it. So we've got about half an hour left. We've got a couple more areas to look at. So we're going to go through these, and the next thing we're going to start talking about is sort of this overlap we've been talking about. Where are these projects going to occur? Where are these initiatives going to happen? And so what we did was we took those objectives and we really analyzed them individually. So these are the public space and streetscape initiatives that we heard from you for our process. So you can see that we have circled the areas where we think there are some opportunities, such as at uh, the Waldo. We also have highlighted the thicker lines, meaning that those are our major thoroughfares that we would like to see a more beautiful environment in terms of the streetscape and infrastructure. But we tied them into the neighborhoods to make sure that everything felt the same and had this connected sort of appearance. You've done some of this already. So these are examples of CRA projects that have been adding to this fabric. Um, it just needs to continue, right? It's basically where we are. Then we looked at these community initiatives. And I'm so happy to hear that you guys mentioned health, you mentioned the grocery stores, you mentioned a lot of things that we are thinking about that would occur in many of these areas. So we have highlighted and circled the places where we think there are opportunities, right, for a more improved. Again, you've already done it before. You have a block program, created the heritage trail, and you also created the museum. Right? So these are all things that really touch the soft side of your heart. Right? They build community, places for people to be and to learn about the place that we are. And then we looked at the economic development initiatives. And we talked about these different areas where economic development could occur. And you can see the areas that we circle, some of them have investment already started, ongoing, you know, some of them are really, really moving. And then we added some larger circles in areas where we think that there is greater opportunity. So that's kind of how we felt we may want to prioritize our funds to go forward. Now, you've done it again. <laughs> you, you, it's, it's not like this can't be accomplished because you, you've done it before. And these are examples of how you've made those economic development um, initiatives occur. Whether it's Cornerstone, um, what's happening in the Power District, and obviously what's happening in the Innovation District, which is really moving forward. So all of these are good things. These are wins. And we want as many wins as we possibly can get. So we took all that information and we overlaid it. Right? And in the legend to, the, to your left, you can see that we have these economic development initiatives in green. We have the community initiatives in the purple. And then we have these uh, public space initiatives in the blue. And then these circles that you see are the cores, are the ideas of how we can take these spaces and overlap them. Some of the circles have multiple colors. Are you noticing that? So at Eighth and Waldo, we have the public space, and we also have economic development, for example. Some of the circles are larger than others, right? And again, that's an indication of where we think more money should be spent, right? University in 13th is going fine, right? There are some opportunities to improve that area. But we think that we can increase our, um, our, our play in other spaces as well. So now, all right, because we're running out of time, we want you to look at these areas. And you all should have maps on your sheet, on your tables. So take those maps and give me another circle. If we miss something, add it. If you think that there's something that we should be looking at, put it next to it, OK? So if you see a circle that you like, put a check next to it. 
you see a circle that you do not like, exit. If you see an area where you think we should be investing our time and, 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 and money, add a circle. Okay, so we'll do this for about five, 10 minutes, and then we're gonna move to the last exercise, which is all about the money. I'm sure you all wanna talk about that. Yes, that area is the closest to the airport. That's the check plus. Check, check plus. <laughs> so, you'll probably want to put the checks in the areas that are inside, because outside of our district, we can't we can't apply funds towards for us. Venture to, <clears throat> to say that when I came to office, the office, that there's potential down here on Southeast Potential. There is potential. And, and I don't see any type of circle or any type of rotation. And I believe down in that area right now, there are blueberry farms. Yeah, and that's. There are, uh, that other, was, farms. There, there, there are, there are other farms yeah. as well. But right now, we do not have anything currently planned for that. So if you think we're missing something, put a circle there. Um, so the, you can. This, that's McPherson right there. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. Looking at the map from right here. Yeah. He's, he's looking yeah. down here. He's asking oh, if that's, yeah. You said you were asking if that. I think that's McPherson. McPherson. And so I, I would think. I mean, we were from. Okay. Right. Yeah, so it's yeah. right well, it's behind. Well, I mean, the first thing in the U around yeah. mm -hmm. So you would draw, draw a big circle there if you want to see, if, we're, if you think we missed that area. Draw it. Yeah, I'm not a great artist. Just this area. But I can grow watermelon. And I'm going to add, because this is the perfect spot for some type of... Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, you got, you got farms already there. It just seems a shame not to. Yeah. Well, Cody and uh, Jordan. Jordan are piloting their their farm stand model, which could be a pilot for a much larger yeah. innovative enterprise. <laughs> Slash research 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 slash when I used to drive the 11 at night, you had the doctor's van, the bus, and it would come out. I want to say it was Tuesday night. You would come out on Tuesday night and do a free clinic. Oh, they do yeah. still. They do still. Okay. They have I the mobile clinic. I haven't yeah. driven, the, uh, driven a bus now. I don't know if it's there Tuesday night, but I can tell you exactly when it is. But they do still go, and they go into Grace. Um, yeah, that I know they go yeah. there. But I guess... Um, no, only Dignity Village. Only the Grace, Grace is still there. Okay, and the idea of doing that is to ensure that more people are getting the actual services in a safe just there this weekend donating some stuff and it was they fenced in that whole area where all the tents have been so they put a fence in and there was an officer there which I thought was good there was an officer you know just making sure everything was safe. I mean John and Abigail and everybody over there have done amazing work trying to make sure that everybody is taken care of. I think the, you also had a check on Cornerstone or that or the check next to Cornerstone. The next to that's what I was doing.
There's a, there are apartments back there. That, that's, um, again, from my perspective, you pick up a ton of folks there mm -hmm. who get frustrated because there's no medical system. A lot of those folks are going to change it's more. And you think, well, that's not personal. But the apartments in 10 or 11, and then they don't want to get back. So you're looking at cornerstone for increased transportation? There's a lot of dog riders right behind the yeah. there's a just uh, to the east. A lot of those folks are taking the hospital first time yeah. to get doctors apart. Yeah. So they take those apart and they take a bus to the for on the way back. Uh, they get back up to you, they're getting complaints that there needs to be more service there. Well again, if we found medical there, they, they wouldn't have to go to camp. Okay. So that's so is is it close enough to a resource hub that it may be but potentially but that's what I'm saying, I just let's give options. So okay. is that available? Let's give that option. Does that make sense? Or it does. Am I it does. I don't so, wanna So you're I, you're so this where this says cornerstone is not just focusing on cornerstone, it's everything inside that circle there as well. Because yeah. that's an economic development initiative for so that whole area. I was hesitant to check it because I was like, well I really want that hub. But if we had our medical facility in Syria, even if it's here, it's right. fine. But that's what we want to check. But that's been that's really good. Well, I'm being super clear. I'm just okay. telling them what we want hey, in each section. There you go. That's awesome. So, All right, we'll use yours and we'll put double checks for everybody to read it. So we have this one. We have. And so what? What are you looking for when you said like this is a double check for the area? What do you want? What is services? There's nothing out there. So additional. So. I mean, I just think grocery needs to be So, so effectively, you're looking for the same things that people are talking about over here. Some grocery, more transit options is what I'm hearing from you. What you have in this side here. Restaurants. There's all you have here is the airport. And the prison. Correct. And I'm at a... And then, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then lamp, a lamp lighter. Right. But, the but there's no... But there's no commercial. There's no commercial. There's no just to pick up on. Okay, here's an example. When I drove the 11 at night, every last trip, I took people to the park, park, went back, picked up them, I wore them on again, diapers, milk, so mm -hmm. every night. What is the best What's place to put it and then how do we support the not shopping there. community or the, the communities so that are not directly in right. this section, this section, this section to be able to get access to there. So if only like one resource It's like if you don't start with a little village, if you don't start with a little village, if you don't start with a little village, 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 you Yes, this is Marty, are you seeing anything else that you need to have added on there? Share for health services in oh, right downtown. Yeah, that, that's, well, yeah, from, that. that's from G Tech. That's the save a lot space as well. Mm -hmm. So that's like yes. the mobility oh, well, hub, the food yeah. hub, yeah. and the timeshare. So G Tech is actually here. G Tech is down here. <clears throat> yeah. um, across the street is where the Save a Lot food market used to be, right? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not. Not here. This, this is Waldo That's University. Waldo, Waldo, Waldo. That's not what I know. You can, you can redraw your line over there if you want. Yeah. Is, that's what I was saying here. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that's, that's why I was why, confused. That's why I said it's here. So, so maybe... Pregnancy brain. That's okay. okay. That's Just redraw your line up. It's there. That's why I was kind of like... Yeah, no, you're right. Okay. I was 
like, I'm pretty sure I know the road. I've been on it 45,000 times. I'm pretty times. sure you have way better <laughs> spatial relations than I do right now. Same resource. Smells like slash. 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 So what I want to let you know is that we are running out of time, okay? So I want to make sure we can get you to the budget portion and then leave some time for conversation. So what we're going to do is we're going to collect your notes, okay? We're going to collect your notes, and at the end we'll have some time for open discussion where you can talk a little bit about these areas. If I show hands, um, how many areas did we get right? Did we, did we get one area right? We get four, five, ten. This map, right? The circles, those are opportunities. Those are initiatives. Those are actual projects, right? So if you agree with these projects based on what you've told us over the time we've been working together, here's where we're going to spend the money. If you disagree, that's why I wanted you to check across on the list on the map so we know that maybe this isn't the project we want to work on. Or it was, it was said in the, in the back, we don't want to spend any more money in the innovation district. Right? So there, there are some choices that we will make together along the way. Although we added circles, well, you didn't have any. That's fine. If you add a circle, that's fine. Because we may have missed something through our stress and our workshops. So the big question now is, how do we spend the money? Yes? You mentioned bonds earlier. Yes. What is the cost association in relationship to the bonds that one requires? That's a good question. So when you flow municipal bonds, there are certain, that's why I talked about the fees. You have to pay fees to manage that money. So there will be a little bit of money coming off because of that. I know we showed a set amount from the city all the way through, but that some of that amount will go towards paying for fees, you know, for managing money. Does that make sense? All right, let's do this again. Option number one, how many of you feel that we should front load it, bond, we know once we decide which projects we're going to do, we can get those projects done early. We know they're going to be paid for. You can see it happen sooner, and then we'll pay it off over time. How many of you want to see projects sooner? All right. Keep your hands up. Got it. All right. Thank you. All right. How many of you want to see the projects happen over time for the next 10 years, little by little? Option two. Two, three, four. All right, you can't raise your hand twice. All right. <laughs> Don't try to fool us. All right, who likes the hybrid? Investment areas. We went through the 
these areas and the budget. We went through the budget. And then here's our schedule for the remainder of our time together. So we're going to come back um, in the month of February to have another community meeting. But tomorrow will be the City Commission at 1 o'clock. And then we have two CRA advisory board meetings that are going to occur in the month of February. Okay. That's going to allow us, uh, well, one more this month and then um, one in the month of February. So it's going to allow us to get uh, a little bit more input from our advisors. And then, after your community engagement meeting, which happens on February 19th, we'll take that final information. The survey will close shortly after that, and we will finalize the plan. And that's what will be presented to the City Commission. Okay. And then, because it's such a big deal, we're going to unveil this to the public. Because, you know, obviously there are a lot of other people that would be interested. So we're going to unveil this to the public on March 17th. And then the City and the County are going to get together. One of the other things I wanted to touch on is I, I know that we did talk about opportunities and opportunity zones. I want to make sure you guys are clear that the, the, the opportunity zone program is a federal program. Right? The city has nothing to do with it, but that's opportunity. Right? That's They're encouraging redevelopment, they're encouraging reinvestment all across the country as well as Puerto Rico. The entire island of Puerto Rico, if you don't know, is one opportunity zone. Okay? So remember that. Think about all the ways that we can get this done. And thank you again so much for your time. It's been a really good evening. You guys did fantastic.